Hope you guys love the quality of this video. I'm so upset because I literally was like, okay, I'm gonna film today. I'm gonna create just like a fun video that I've been wanting to do for a while now. And it's perfect because it's October and I was just like so excited. And then I went on my camera and like the battery was missing and I was like, what the freak? But then I remembered at my cousin's house when we were filming a video for our youth group that there was a battery, a camera battery on the counter. And I was like, that's not mine because I never took my battery out. Like, I don't know why I took it out. So anyway, I have to film on my phone. So sorry, my camera setup's awful. Lighting's not great, but we're gonna deal with it. So today I really felt like reading um, these stories called Let's Not Meet Stories. And I've been watching videos of people reading Let's Not Meet Stories for a long time, especially, I almost did not say that right. Courtney Semple in her um, YouTube is C Jades. She has all these spooky videos and I love scary things. I don't know why, especially like true stories, like things that actually have happened to people. Um, sometimes they're not true and they're like hyperboles and they exaggerate their stories, but they're still entertaining. So just so you know, like reading these stories, I know not everything is true, but it's just fun to believe that everything's true when you're reading them just because it makes it for a more fun experience. So if you don't like scary things or like real life scary things, then I don't really suggest that you watch this video if you're gonna get paranoid because paranoia is real. I get paranoid quite often. Let's Not Meet Stories are real life stories that happen to people um, that is like an interaction with you and someone else or um, paranormal stories like you and a ghost, if you believe in them, spirit, whatever, what have you, demons, whatever. Um, but I love reading them, even if they're not true, I just like pretending that they are true just to make them more fun. So um, the first one I'm gonna read for you guys is my crazy ex tried killing me multiple times. And I'm literally just reading this. So it's not gonna be like a fun, aesthetically pleasing video. It's literally just gonna be me reading. So here we go. So let's just for the sake of the story, call me G and my ex just used his name Ricky. When I was about 15, I met a new kid in school who apparently had just moved into town. I didn't really like him at first. He was kind of a creep and he gave me weird vibes. Anyways, I'm not sure how it happened, but he ended up somehow charming me to go out with him. Well, being young and kind of naive, I thought, well, I guess let's see how it goes. At first things were great. He was sweet, caring, and just a good guy. Well, fast forward maybe two to three weeks into the relationship, he ends up getting us both arrested for breaking a glass window to a storefront. Someone called the police and we were both arrested that night. The cops questioning me asked what the heck I was doing with a dang near 12, 20 year old. I looked at them in shock because this man told me he was only 17. He had a baby face and all that so you really couldn't tell his real age. Anyway, my mom ends up picking me up and screaming at me. She didn't want me to see him anymore. Me being young and not wanting to listen to my parents, I ended up staying with them. He groomed me to be exactly what he wanted, always calling me his little girl. Ew, ew, that's gross. I don't like pet names. I think pet names are disgusting. Like, do not call me baby girl. Do not call me little girl. No. And always telling me he wanted to stay this young forever and to not get any tattoos or piercings because it would not make me look like a child anymore. Which in hindsight was weird, but I didn't dwell on it too much. Well, I ended up going with a friend to visit a guy, a friend of hers, and Ricky was nowhere to be found. He didn't answer my calls or texts. So I just said whatever and shrugged it off. 
He calls me eventually while I'm hanging out with them. He's plastered drunk and starts threatening me saying, where the heck are you? By the way, I'm like changing the, ling the language to make it like clean just because I don't swear. So everything's just like, the language is getting shifted a little bit in case you're like, that's not what I said. That's why I gotta alter it just a little bit. You better not be with no guys or I'm gonna kill him. So I start panicking. I told him and my friend we were just walking around this little town and he could meet me on the main road. He pulls up and hops out of the car, screaming at the tops of his lungs. You little freak. You were out with guys and your freak friend. <laughs> I started crying and telling him, no, 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 it isn't like that. We were just hanging out, I swear, I told him. He didn't believe me and he ended up hitting me full fist right to the face. I grabbed my face and ended up crying some more. Now at this time, a whole group of neighbors heard him screaming at me and came outside. They told him to get away from me and that he shouldn't be screaming at me, which this makes him even angrier. He starts trying to fight everyone on the block. Eventually the police came and took him in for the night. I didn't press any charges or anything because I didn't want to get him in trouble. I know I'm stupid for that and I should have left, but he had this hold on me. So he ended up apologizing the next day, saying he was sorry and he would never put his hands on me again. Sadly, I believed him. Fast forward to one night, he calls me frantically telling me to walk to this field by his house and he needs me to bring him a backpack and to meet him ASAP. So I did. Big mistake. As soon as I get there, I could smell the booze. He had something hidden in his pants. He said, turn around and let me put this in your backpack. So I did. He pulls out a gun. He loaded it and put it to my head saying, if you tell anyone about this gun or us transporting it back to my house, I'll kill you. So I just told him I wouldn't say anything, put it in there and we can go home. I'm scared to death that I was going to lose my life that night, but it wasn't the last time he would do this to me. Fast forward to a night, he took me to his friend's house to stay. He's drinking and his mom told me to not let him do so. She ends up calling me. Now, as I'm on the phone with him, with her, he loads up a gun again. Oh my gosh, he put it to my head and mouths to me. Don't you dare tell her I've been drinking or I'll kill you right here. So I tell her everything is fine and he's fine and we're having a good time watching movies and hanging out and we will be back in the morning. She hangs up and he finally puts the gun down and says that, oh, that's my good little girl. Goodness, it was so scary and creepy. It would get creepier every time he said it. So I played it off as him just being drunk. I'm now about 17. He has since then abused me multiple times, left bruises and gave me a black eye, broke ribs and so on. One day, I tell him I'm done because I caught him cheating on multiple different occasions. He pushed me to the ground and started strangling me, and he said, the only way you're leaving me is in a body bag, and is choking me so hard till I blacked out. As this is going on, I lost consciousness, I think. This is it. I'm dead. He's gonna kill me. I wake up a few hours later to him freaking out, thinking I'm dead. Once I get up, he comes over and hugs me and says, I'm so sorry, baby. I didn't mean it. At this point, I'm scared to death. I play it off and forgive him. Once I turned 18, I left him for good. After we broke up though, he sent me from an anonymous number, him with a pill bottle full of my teeth I had removed from my mouth that I knew I threw out long ago after having them removed from my braces to make my teeth fit in a bag of my dirty underwear he was stealing from the wash our whole relationship. Ew, bro, like I didn't move away and change my number so he couldn't contact me. I'm 23 now and have a great boyfriend who treats me right and we have a place together. But about a year ago, he found out where I lived and tried to kidnap me. My boyfriend went to get a gun to protect me and he ended up throwing a brick at my house and ended up speeding off. He since forgot where I live and is in jail for strangling another girl. Sorry, this is so long, but there's a lot more and it's already really long. I don't want to make this any longer for your sake, but to my psycho ex Ricky, let's never meet again. I can't even imagine because like I had something really scary happen to me with someone like in 2020 like it was just scary but actually like someone putting a gun up to my head and telling me like if you don't do this or like if you don't listen to me if you don't stay with me like I'll kill you or the only way you're gonna leave me is in a body bag and he's breaking your ribs and you're like 17 like 16 17 you're going through this that's so scary because like you're young and then like not knowing any better or like not knowing how to defend yourself can be really freaking scary. I don't even know what to say, but that is so crazy and I'm glad he's in jail. He deserves to stay in jail. Okay, 
So I just started editing my video and I was like, dude, why did I only do one story? And I don't remember why I only did one. So I'm gonna do one more Let's Not Meet story and then add it to that. So hopefully like you guys will have like two Let's Not Meet stories to listen to. Again, still filming on my phone. I won't get my camera battery back until tomorrow. So sorry, you're just gonna have to bear with it. Also, please don't mind this ugly thing on my face. I am trying to cover it with my hair. I'm so annoying and when like I literally see like the smallest little pimple forming I just like pop it and it was like premature so now it's like it's like irritated that I tried to pop it before it was ready and now it looks like that so sorry I literally like have not gotten ready for the day or anything like I've been doing homework and I was like oh my gosh like I was editing and I was like I have what why am I like being so annoyed <laughs> like talking so weird but I was like we need one more let's not meet story so i found one i didn't read it yet i don't read these like beforehand i just see like the titles and i'm like oh that sounds good i also want to read no sleep stories too maybe we'll do that in the, like the next one because those are like really like creepy to read these are more just like absurd but um this one's called creepy guy taking photos of me in walmart creepy guys i don't know about you but literally walmart scares the crap out of me i just don't like it and if i don't have to go inside of walmart i won't go in walmart um but if i'm with other people it's really not too bad <laughs> the story's down here on my computer so if i'm like looking down um that's why i'm not like avoiding eye contact it was around 7 to 8 p.m and i was with my fiance and was tired waiting to go home. My fiance had stepped away to ask an employee about something, and that's when I had felt the presence of someone as they were watching me. I tried to think nothing of it, tried not to be paranoid. Out of my peripheral, I could see a man with a basket behind me at the end of the aisle just staring at me. I figured he was possibly looking for an item in the aisle or possibly checking me out, as that's normal for me, sadly. I tried to think nothing of it, but it just felt off, and I had this pit growing in my stomach. I guess when the man was sure my fiance had left, he slowly walks past me with his basket and asks if I'm okay, to which I nod my head tiredly and explain, yes, I'm just tired. I'm fine. He holds his stare at me for a bit and then moves up to the end cap of the aisle. That's when he pulls out his phone and tried to appear as if he was taking a photo of something on the end cap of the aisle, but his camera was pointed directly at me and he was really bad at hiding it. I even looked directly at the camera. Not knowing what to do, having never been in this situation, I still try to play it off as if I was being paranoid and that maybe he's bad at taking photos, I don't know. The man then gets a call with someone and I couldn't help but listen. He said, I found what you're looking for. He then moved to the next aisle. I see the first one, but I don't see the second one, he said. By second one, I assume he meant my fiance. I was still trying to brush it off until he said the next words. Do you want me to grab it? I assume playing it off as he was talking about some item, but I knew it was about me. The guy gets off the phone. For whatever reason, after he said that, I did decide, I, <laughs> whoa. I decided to look at the aisle directly across from me and I see this other man. And he looks directly at the guy who's taking photos of me, points at his wrist as if he had a watch, the motion someone would use to say, time's ticking or hurry up. And he did not have a watch, so he wasn't messing with anything like that. Immediately, I had this awful feeling, and I knew that if I did not leave immediately to find my fiancé, something bad was going to happen. So I just left our basket there and ran past the man to my fiancé and told him everything. I was shaking so bad and could barely get the words out. The guy paced around the same aisle a few times, peeking over at us until eventually he left, I assume. I told an employee and she asked if I would want someone to walk us out, to which I replied, yes please. I didn't see the guy as we were exiting the store and I'm not sure how long they'd been following us. This happened last night, I'm still shaken up about it. So the creepy guy who's taking photos of me and had plans to kidnap me for whatever reason, let's never meet again. And she has an update here. So it says update, yesterday they arrested 12 men for human trafficking, very close to the same area I was in. One of the men in the photos they posted looks very similar to the guy who's taking photos of me and a few others look similar as well. However, I didn't see the photo of the other guy who was with him, so he's probably still out there. There's been a lot of trafficking in my area recently and I feel it's only going to get worse. Hopefully this doesn't happen again, but this is the second time something like this has happened at a Walmart. Bro. <coughs> Bless me. Thank you. Dude, that's honestly really scary because like, I mean, like, I love paranormal stories because I think they're, like, creepy, but 
it's like really scary because these things like happen like in real life and like people are honestly scarier just because like they're i feel like they're just like capable of a lot more physical like torture kind of things and it's just so scary so yeah be careful when you're out and about um and just like don't be afraid like like you did the right thing or like she's this person who wrote this is never gonna watch this but like they did the right thing by asking like an employee to walk them out to their car just so like they're safe and they have like another witness in case something did happen because human trafficking is really real and like the place that i live in right now is like really really close to another like area that's like really well known for human trafficking um i literally like go up to that city all the time because it has like the mall there and it's just like a really nice city but it's like well known for human trafficking because there's like really close to the um one of my the interstate highway what is it called i can't think of it freeway i don't know whatever that highway is that can take you past the border <laughs> so um there's like a lot of human trafficking that happens there and it's really scary it's like one of the most known places like in the united states for human trafficking so be careful um that's like a good lesson for people it's just like if you're scared or you just like notice something suspicious if you're paranoid or not it doesn't matter it's just like better safe than sorry because stuff like this like happens all the time but anyways guys i just wanted to do like two um let's not meet stories just to see like i don't know how people like it and i'll just kind of like see and go from there i love stories i love telling stories like at one point i'm hoping that i can like read books on here and just like read chapter by chapter and people can follow along but um that's just like a maybe kind of thing i wanted to like read these stories because they're short and they're fun and they're scary and uh it's perfect because it's like october so let me know if you guys like it no one's gonna say that in the comments probably but just like this video or just like if you're a friend and you're like oh that was fun just like let me know so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and edit this and try to get it up today for you guys um today is october 12th so if i get it up today i did what i was meant to do <laughs> i love you guys and i'll see you later Peace out.